to be your home. May I see your hands? Amen. Amen. We are still looking for a city. <laughs> and builder, whose builder and maker is God. Are you still looking for your God? Hallelujah. Just give me a second and we're going to have you play. Be vigilant. Not in fear, but being alert. Being vigilant because of our adversary. What is your adversary doing? He's roaming around. You know, we were hit, we were hit, we were hit. Like all this month, out of a fast, and man, our church family just got bam, 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 bam. I said, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's going on? We were under attack. One attack after another, somebody in our church family was being under attack. And then I realized, this is the hour to pray. I called for an urgent prayer for those who could join me. I just, so here's the thing. It's coming to me now. So here's the thing. I hope we have all your information and your contact. You will be hearing from me. And when the Holy Spirit says to call, I don't care if it's 12 o'clock in the day or 10 o'clock at night, I'm calling. Because I will sound the alarm if the Holy Spirit says, call the church together, bring them together. I'm not worried about your family. I'm not worried about, about what, what you're doing. If you're sleeping, I'm going to call the alarm. Why? Because you're going to protect your family. I will not be the only one standing in the gap protecting you. You're going to have to come out of your comfort zone, in your slippers, in your night coat. Come on, somebody. I don't know if people don't wear curlers, maybe some words. Rollers in your hair, your rag or whatever on your head. And we're going to come out and we're going to seek God if God says to do it, we're going to do it because we're living in an unprecedented time that things are happening at such an alarming speed that we won't have time to think. We won't, all we're going to have time to do is to act. We won't have time to think. We're going to have to act immediately and stay the hand of the enemy. So when he call it, we're coming. Whether it's on Kingdom Connection, or it's physically in person, or if I'm just asking you to do it in your homes. But get ready, church. As I said, we're living in an hour now. Faith without works is dead. And Paul said this, show me your faith. I will show you my faith by my works. So we have to get ready. I'm asking you not to saturate your eyes and minds with the news. 24 hours a day, get informed, thank you Trey. Begin to pray for a strategy against what this virus is doing. Pray for those who are vulnerable. Mama Dorothy, Mama Caroline, Mama Alberta, Miss our own sister Miss Betty. Myrna has joined us. She's out. I went to visit her. She had two stints put in this week. So she's not able to be here. The pastor and I went to make sure she's okay. We're commanded to take care of the elderly. The orphans and the widows. <laughs> it's time to change your behavior. time to stop thinking about your life and your life only and become the body. We're going to pray effectively. We're going to pray diligently and we will be alert. Pastor Ray said in the early service and we had planned to say this so I'm not repeating his message. We had a meeting and we chose to share this so I'm sharing it in 1030. Fear does three things. Number one, fear freezes, causes paralysis. You know, the moment you hear about fear, the first thing you do is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The second thing fear does, fear takes flight, cause you to want to run away, want you to ignore, act like it's not happening, or you just simply just run away. I can't deal with this, I can't deal with this, I can't deal with this. 
third thing fear does causes one to fight. So we won't become par uh, par paralyzed. We won't run away. But we will allow this fear, this pandemic, to cause us to fight. For the word has declared in Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. So therefore, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 says, lay hold on eternal life. Church family, I'm telling you, and you know and mark it this day, that I'm telling you to begin to lay hold on eternal life. Your name wasn't written in the Lamb's book of life for nothing. There is a day of reckoning. So I was lying in my bed this morning, just contemplating about getting up. I heard the Lord says, the number of my children days, the days of their lives are numbered. I heard him say that. Which is not to catch you off guard. He's simply saying, I have numbered your days. And I'm the only one who knows that number. We get all up in arms when the number is called. But no one knows your number. I don't know my number. And that's why it's, it's important that we make every day count that we live and that we do good with the power that's within us. The Bible has declared that when it's in your power to do good, to do good. Why? Your days are numbered. I'm so excited for this hour. This is the hour I was born for. Because I always felt like when I started preaching 30 years ago, I was I was out of season or or I was be, um, before my time. And I used to tell the Lord, how much time I got. I used to tell the Lord, God, why am I such a preacher like this and why can't I prophesy cars and why can't I prophesy husbands and wives for people and why can't I prophesy money and why can't I prophesy why can't God why when I get up and I get in my there I am I'm always giving them wisdom and knowledge and I'm always talking about what's to come and I'm always reminding them of those scriptures that they hope that wasn't in there like you know you gotta love one another and you don't get to walk in unforgiveness and I'm like, God, why, why? Everybody's like, I see, I, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I see a woman coming your way. And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, and I'm like, oh, man. And then they hear, here comes Reverend Leola Stewart before I became ordained, before I was ordained, before I became a pastor. And then everybody would go, he, she's going to bring that sombering word that we, she's just going to. And I, that used to hurt my feelings. Oh, but today. Oh, but today. And I just heard the word from the bishop that visited us, and he said, You are like an Esther, a Deborah, and a Catherine Coleman wrapped up in one. Hallelujah! For such a time as this, this is my finest hour. My finest hour. Because I don't have to be afraid of the faces. I can preach the word without compromise. And I can back it up and tell you, thus saith the Lord. And God said, it's time to shift. Shift your focus. Shift your attention. Amen? Hallelujah. We won't fear. We will fight. Amen. And I'll finish that scripture. Give you three things. 91 and I'm out of here. Lay hold on eternal life. Wherefore thou art also called. And has professed. A good profession. Before many witnesses. I've already said this. But not to be redundant. But I'm going to say it one more time. There are three anchors. For trusting God in this. Pandemic. Pandemic, I'm sorry, this pandemic. Three anchors for trusting God in this crisis. Number one, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the experts. 
listen to what CDC is saying, watch a credible media outlet, listen to the medical experts. This virus isn't new, it's only new to our ears. They don't have the vaccine, that's why I'm begging you not to walk in presumption and foolishness because they do not have a vaccine yet. It's important that we protect ourselves. Number two, don't be irresponsible and allow people to cause you not to become responsible. Don't follow after someone else. Don't follow after someone else's faith. Know where you are and act accordingly. Being irresponsible is not cool. There is a pandemic. There is a disease and it is killing people. We must find a healthy balance between being responsible and walking in faith. The Bible tells us that we are to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we're to acknowledge him. Amen? Lean on the eternal God. God is our way out of this pandemic and we must be proactive during this time. And number three, lift your expectation for God's promises to be revealed to you in a magnificent way. Lift your expectation. Expect God to protect you. Expect God to protect your family. Expect when you walk into the local grocery stores and into wherever you need to go. Expect it. Walk in the expectation of God that he says my loving kindness and my tender mercies will keep you. When you get in the car, expect the blood of Jesus to cover you. Expect the promises of God to be in your life. And as I close, we will close with Psalms 91. Please stand to your feet. They can put it on the screen. It was so powerful when Pastor Ray did it, but I want to do something a little bit different. Start, we're gonna start, we're gonna read all 16 verses and now we'll dismiss you. We will get out right on time, like we normally do. Starting with verse one. I want us to read it, and when you read it, understand you're reading it over your lives, your own individual lives. Read it in faith. Read it every day. And cover yourself with it. Church family, on the count of three, we're going to read all 16 verses. I did it Wednesday through Brother Lemuel, and I'm doing it today. Let's read. Whoever... say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foul snare, from the deadly pestilence, coronavirus. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him 
for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pronounce Psalms 91 over this entire church, over this world, over this region, over these communities, over our schools, over our daycares, over our businesses. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.